Hello. The purpose of this lecture is to go over online resources that you'll use this semester in dendrology, both in lecture and lab. Uh, but really, what we're going over today is going to be useful to you throughout your career. It takes a lot more than one semester to learn how to correctly identify all your trees. And it's a skill you'll be working on, not just this semester, but year after year after year. We've hosted a, a lot of different course materials for you on a website for this course. And so if you go to Google and type in SFA Dendro, um, it should come up. You can also go to www.sfadendro.com. And uh, the course website's up because as you've seen in our learning management system, Brightspace, you can't access your course content either usually before the semester or after that semester. So this material will hopefully be up there available for you for a long time. Um, putting this on a website also enables us to uh, you meet the outreach mission of our college, uh, which we couldn't do where people can't log in behind our learning management system. Uh, another main reason this is on, online and not on our learning management system is that uh, there's some quizzes I'll show you in a few minutes that rely on JavaScript that can't be enabled inside our learning management system. So if you navigate to the Forestry 2319 Dendro tab here, you can see all the usual things you might see in a learning management system. Here are course documents, such as the syllabus. Uh, and if you open that up, you'll see that it loads up the PDF for you and you'll be able to review the syllabus. Um, there's a lot of other useful things up here. Uh, you can find the bonus opportunity list, for example, that'll show you a lot of the different uh, opportunities you have this semester to earn bonus points to help your grade. Reading assignments for the semester are up. For each lecture, there's going to be both a video of the lecture that's available during an actual class, as well as all the slides that are used for you. So there's the full size PowerPoint slides. Scrolling down further, here's a printout version for you with three slides per page. So that's going to be up all semester for you. It's already up for all the lectures um, for the entire semester. When we get closer to the exams, uh, both midterms and the final exam, I have exam banks up here for you. So here's five years of actual old exams in this course. Um, so it doesn't mean the questions are going to be exactly the same, but as you look through five years of exams, you get a pretty good idea of at least the structure of what that exam is going to look like. So um, I highly recommend you take advantage of those. When we get into the presentation assignment, that's posted up here, um, as well as any list of species when we start doing lectures that are more focused on different groups of species. Next up, uh, we have the lab documents tab. And so you can see a number of introductory lab materials we'll talk about during our very first lab of the semester. And then for each lab, there's a page that will have a number of different features for you. Um, so that includes a map of all the trees that we'll be teaching you. So you can go back to them if you'd like. Um, and then there's the handouts we'll talk about in lab, the Easy ID sheet, the Virginia Tech back sheets, and the phonetic guide for each lab. And you can go into each of these PDF panels and scroll through them uh, as you like. You can download them. They'll be up all semester. I'm going to post grades for you on the course website this semester. So to do that, I'll email you the first week of class, a five-digit pin. And so here's what that spreadsheet will look like, where you can find your row that has your pin, see what your grade looks like for each assignment. Uh, feel free to come by, stop by my office. Anytime you have any questions on grades, I'd be happy to talk with you about them. I can pull up the spreadsheet and show you how you're doing. We can work through hypotheticals, especially near the end of the semester. Uh, there's also a one pager here with different recommendations on things you may be interested in doing uh, if you're concerned with your grade, uh, depending on what grade level you may be at in the course. Uh, you'll notice the current course grade at the beginning will say S for everyone, and that's because you need to complete a syllabus quiz. The syllabus quiz is one of the few things this semester that will be on our learning management system, D2L Brightspace. And so go ahead and get on there, complete it within the first couple of weeks of class. This way I don't have to spend a whole day going over the course syllabus. And um, as, as long as you retake it enough times to earn 100%, it'll show you what the correct answers are each time you attempt it. Um, once you earn 100% on it, next time I update grades, uh, that S will be gone and it'll show your actual current course grade. So. So that is one of the few things on Brightspace, as well as some drop boxes if you want to use them to turn in your presentation assignment. Um, one of the bonus opportunities is a leaf collection. So I have a few links up here as well uh, that'll show you different things you may be aware of if you're going to be putting together a leaf collection. So you can go check these out for how to press leaves correctly, things like that. 
Okay, so that's a little bit of course management, but really the tree identification and quiz tabs, I think are gonna be the main things on this site you're gonna be using this semester. The content of this site is really primarily over 2000 photos for over 200 species, focused really here on East Texas. It doesn't have a national scope. And so I'll start with the second part here, the morphology glossary. Uh, there are a lot of terminology terms that we use to describe different aspects of the morphology of a tree. And so here, if we're looking at leaves and the tips of them or the apex or the apices, here you have pages where it lists the different terms we might use. It shows you a description of them, a cuminant shaped like an acute angle with a long attenuated point. But then you can scroll down here and you can see photos of different leaves with acuminate tips. You can click on them and they'll get even bigger there. Um, the light box that runs in this site, it'll show you thumbnails of the whole gallery right there you can look at. Um, you can take any image you want to in here and zoom in on it. Most of them are 2000 by 3000 pixels or larger. So you can zoom in as far as you want on that. Um, you could right click these in your browser and download them if you want for any reason. So uh, you have that up and accessible to you all semester. Then we have our photo fact sheets. These are all those photos um, and each title of each tree also indicates what lab it's taught in. Uh, so if it rained real hard during your first lab and you had trouble paying attention, you can come into this title filter here, type in lab one, I used a zero one there, so it doesn't include things for lab 11 or lab 10. Um, for lab two, three, four, you, you don't have to include that zero there. And you can see it's filtered us down now from 200 species to just the 15 we learn in week one. And then I can go to this page. Let's look at poison ivy. That's an important one to know, right? Uh, for some of these species, we have videos that I've put together in this class, and those will be up here. Uh, for some species, I haven't put together videos yet but great folks at Virginia Tech and NC State, both with really strong dendrology programs, they've got public YouTube videos up. And so I've embedded some links to them here. So you can review their faculty and grad students teaching you these trees. If you miss a lab, that's a great way to catch up on materials. And then there's all the photos that we've got, you know, from uh, our website here. So you can click through those, read descriptions on each of them, blow them up larger, look at them, do whatever you need to do. So if you miss a lab, if it's raining real hard during lab and you had trouble paying attention, anything like that, this is up here all semester for every tree we're teaching in lab. So you got a lot of great resources you can use there. Next up, we have the quizzes tab. And I think this is what folks use most on this site, especially this first one, the image quiz. So if we go look at the image quiz, it takes all those photos that we just looked at in that tree identification tab, and it puts them in this format where you can quiz yourself on them. So I strongly encourage you to go outside this semester, look at different things in the field, but that's not always possible. You may not be going out much at night. Um, you know, it may be raining real hard or whatever. You may not want to go out. Or you may be having trouble seeing one of the species that we've learned. You don't know where any of them are that you can go look at other than the one we learned on. So here's 206 species off that master list. Uh, but if we look at this, I can select only lab one if I want, lab two only, lab two cumulative, which includes lab one and lab two which is how you'll be quizzed in the field. We'll go over that in lab. But here, let's just look at lab one only, the 15 species we're learning in week one. I click that, it shows me an image. Let's say I look at this and I'm like, well, it's January. <laughs> Nothing's flowering. I don't know what the flowers look like on this tree. You can click these purple arrows left or right. And what you see they'll do is they'll upload more photos. So now we have a twig photo, looking at that. Maybe you don't know twigs yet. You click it again. And it's just gonna work through all the different photos that we have for each of these species up on the site um, so that you can look at bark, for example. Um, and then, you know, often folks wanna focus on the leaves. Of course, we have plenty of leaf photos up here. So now how this works, you're seeing pictures of this, but you don't really know what it is. And so you can start typing in common names. So let's say for this one, I put in silk tree. It doesn't do anything. It's not telling me I'm right, but I'm looking at this, I'm saying, I'm pretty sure that's a silk tree. I can push this uh, gray plus button, that's a hint button. And what it'll do, it takes me back to my last correct letter. So in that case, it was a K. So now I type in silk tree, all one word, which is correct. It lights up green and I know I've gotten that correct. Let's say you haven't even started learning the families yet. You can get it to just give you the family, click that green check mark. It'll show you what the family is for BCE. Maybe you've already learned the, the other names on it. So I can type in Albizia, 
and it lights up. It's right. Um, maybe I don't remember the epithet. I can hit that hint button again, and it'll give me just the first letter. And then I can type in not quite right. I can hit the hit button again. It'll take it back to my last correct letter. And there we go. So you've got it right. You can hit this X button here and they all disappear. You can type them again if you want. You can hit this green check mark, they all reappear. Um, you can set this up in a quiz mode or a flashcard mode down here. So I can set it up in flashcard mode. And now as I move to a new species, it just goes ahead and tells me what it is. So you can use them as quizzes, you can use them as flashcards. Um, you can click on each of these photos. It'll open in another tab. And they're at the, again, the two, full 2000 by 3000 pixel resolution. So once it downloads, you can click it and look at it. Speed will vary depending on the bandwidth of the internet connection you use. So um, another useful feature that we'll be able to use this semester, if you're doing this in the, in the spring semester, is you can turn the leaves off. So if I turn the leaves off, let me go to another species. I'm looking at poison ivy here. Let me see if I'm right. Yep, I'm right, that's poison ivy. Now you can see a few leaves in there. Um, what this removing leaves feature does is it gets rid of all the photos that are just of a leaf because I've labeled them with leaf in the file name. So this is a twig photo with a leaf in the background. So you'll still have some leaves. Clicking the lava I pine now. Uh, here's a river birch. So as we look at these different river birch photos, I'll click through all of them here. That was a you know sort of bark photo that had some leaves in it, a twig photo that had a few parts of leaves in it but it's not showing me any of those up close photos of just leaves. So that may help you study in winter. Um, there are a few buttons down here. You can click this blue uh, crossed arrows button and that will either give you the species in alphabetical order by genus then epithet, or it'll give it to you in a random order. I usually use random because that's how we see trees in the real world. They're not lined up alphabetically, right? And then you can have the photos in an alphabetical order or not. Again, I usually use the random feature on that because there's no reason to look at, you know, bark, then leaf, then twig, because that's sort of the alphabetical order that they would be in. So I usually use those on random. The nice thing is they're random without replacement. So as you're using this, it will give you all 15 species for week one, and you'll go through all of them, and then it'll give them to you again, but in a different random order. So it's random without replacement. Now, as you're doing this, what you're going to find in dendrology is we've got a river birch here. River birch is generally an easier tree for most folks. Some other trees are. Some trees are more difficult. So I'll type river birch in here. Sure enough, it's right. Maybe I don't really think I need to study river birch anymore, right? I've got that one down. I'm, I'm confident in that one. That's where this filter feature comes in really handy. So I'm going to filter. You know, we're going to learn four oaks in week one. So I could type Fagaceae, the oak family in here hit enter and what you'll see it did i'm clicking these arrows now on this list it checked for Gacy, it unchecked everything else but i can click within each group further and i can see these are the four species it's highlighted say i'm also very comfortable with white oak i think i know that one real well i can uncheck it so now what this filter feature is going to do is it's going to give me a quiz with just southern red oak water oak and cherry bark oak. Um, so now i go out of that i click to my next species and it looks like we've got a cherry bark oak here. Yep, got it correct. And then looks like we may have water oak. No, I got it wrong. So let's try southern red oak. There it was. Those are southern red oak acorns. Um, and then this one, you know, being the last should be our water oak. There's a custom quiz with just three species. And then it's going to repeat those three species in a different order with different photos from each. So that's the image quiz. It works very effectively. Um, students have always reported it works well for them. Um, the other thing, I, I use a version of this I have just on my desktop to learn students' names. So I usually have most or all of your names learned by the very first lecture. And it usually takes me about an hour with a class this size to do that using a version of this tool that's not online anywhere, just using student ID photos. Um, there's filter examples up here, help, you know, you can email me with questions if you've got them. And these other things all link to different parts of the website that uh, we have already looked at. So that's the image quiz. It's going to be probably one of the more helpful features for you on our SFA Dendro website. Other quizzes are the taxonomy quiz. That one's going to give you the common name and you just type in the scientific name. If you have a slow internet connection, you don't have to download any photos. So that one will run quicker and help you learn the scientific names. The morphology quiz is going to look at all those different terms we looked at, like the different leaf apices, like a cuminate 
It'll show you a picture and ask you what the leaf apex is and you can enter and describe it. The Latin term quiz, the Latin terms, I have a list of 103 of them for you that are meaningful and help you learn how to ID plants. Uh, those are fair game for the first midterm. So there's a quiz up here that will help you study them for midterm one. The family name quiz is just for fun. Um, the, the 206 species, 207 species on this website have, uh, I think, come from 78 different families. So you can learn what the meanings of those family names are. And then there will be plenty of dendro quizzes at our field station when you get to forestry field station for the forestry students. And so there's a quiz set up for just that list of species. Very similar to everything we're doing in dendro. I just took out some of the ornamental species like crepe myrtle, for example, that we won't see in the middle of the woods. Okay, uh, next up is our links tab here. So, you know, this SFA Dendro website has some useful resources for you, uh, but it doesn't cover trees outside of really East Texas or the U.S. South. Uh, there's a lot of other really good, really powerful resources out there for tree ID that you're definitely going to want to use this semester. Um, so you can see them all listed right here. And what I've done in my other tabs up here is I've opened up each of them for you so we can take a look at them. So this is the Virginia Tech Dendrology website. It's one of the best dendro websites out there. Uh, it has a national scope, so it covers more than a thousand species from the West Coast to the East Coast and everywhere in between. And so for example here, um, you can select from the families on this list, genus, species, it works real with common names too. Let's say I wanna know more about white oak, Quercus alba, I can type in white oak here and it'll bring up a fact sheet for me. Now there's a bunch of different oaks that may go by white oak. So it gives you all the scientific names too. I'm interested in Quercus alba. So I'll go to that one. And here it's a fact sheet. They've got some fancy features where you can scroll around twigs 360, uh, different good pictures, really good range maps. So these are good accurate range maps that you can see there. That one was a little small, but you can see they enable you to download the full size PDF map. Lots of links to other sites that are useful uh, for these trees. You can hear the pronunciation of them in Italian Latin if you're interested. And then this line right here is often very helpful, looks like. So if I'm trying to identify a tree, I think it might be a white oak. I'm looking at it here. It's not quite right. I can then click maybe overcup oak here. And that's a similar looking tree. I can look at it and say, oh, okay, I didn't have a white oak. I had an overcup. Oak. And it tells you here now what's similar to overcup oak. So lots of great information out there. If we go back to the Virginia Tech Dendrology homepage, there's a lot of great stuff here, uh, but I really just wanna focus you in on one other thing that I, I really use all the time. Um, if I go to ID Help ID Keys, I'm gonna open up this interview key kind of midway down the page. And this is a fantastic resource to use if you're trying to identify something and you only know a little bit about it. So let's say someone has found something for me here in Texas and growth habit, it's a, it's a big tree. So I click tree. Now, the nice thing is you can leave most of these as I'm not sure, and it'll still work great. Um, let's say it's a broad leaf and we look at it and we've been able to tell that it's bifoliate compound. If that's all I know about this tree, it's a tree, it's in Texas, it's bifoliate compound. Now, here are the 1,105 species that they have on the Virginia Tech Dendrology site. You can scroll through all of them. Um, the red ones are invasive. I think the yellow ones are ornamental, but not invasive. So that's their notation there. That's a lot of trees. But once I click submit, telling him it's a tree in Texas, it's bipinately compound. Let's see what it comes back with. I'm down to two possible trees. It's going to be honey mesquite or Jerusalem thorn. And so now I can click honey mesquite. I can look at it and say, hey, that is exactly what I've got uh, here from Central Texas. Maybe. So, and I can also say it looks like scurvy mesquite, velvet mesquite, cat cloth. Acacia, you can go look at these other similar ones and see if those are close. That, that really helps you narrow down, you know, a tree from just a few things you may know about. It. So again, that's the uh, ID help, ID keys, interview key, excellent feature. Okay, uh, the next link up is gonna be this USDA plants database. And this does both woody plants, trees, and herbaceous plants, really everything. It can be a little tricky in that you need to be real careful whether you're looking at scientific name or common name in this drop-down box. I've got it set on scientific name. So let's say I, I wanna look up some information on cherry bark oak, and I know a scientific name is Quercus pagoda. Let me click go there. 
And here it's only found one species. That's great. And so I can look at cherry bark oak here by clicking Quercus pagoda. It'll give me a few photos. It'll give us a range map, but you know, use these range maps with a grain of salt. They're not the best maps. I mean, we're here in Texas and we know that we don't find cherry bark oaks in El Paso, in Lubbock, or out in Big Bend. I, I can zoom in on these and it'll show me a county by county map uh, once this loads here in a second. Sometimes you have to zoom in a little bit further. Let's see what it does here. There we go. So it zoomed into our counties. We can look in here at East Texas. This isn't accurate. Cherry bark oak is native to most counties in East Texas here. It's only showing two. Um, cherry bark oak is pretty much native in every county in Mississippi, most of them in Alabama. And a lot of them aren't lit up here. So this is not the best range map. Don't use these in your presentations or anything like that. But it gives you kind of a rough geographic idea of where that tree is found. Here's the full taxonomy if you want to see what class, subclass, order the trees are in. Um, so that can be helpful for you. Synonyms. This tab is going to be real handy. Um, let's say you've gotten an older textbook and you're reading about something they're calling Quercus falcata variety pagodifolia. And they're calling it cherry bark oak, but that's not the scientific name we've learned. It's not the same tree. Well, if I want to know that for sure, click the synonyms, synonyms tab. And sure enough, look here, Quercus falcata variety pagodifolia. Uh, basically, we change the names of trees over time. So this tells me that's just an old name. It's still the same old cherry bark oak. We're just redefining how we call it. All the taxonomy I'm using in this course is based on this USDA plants website. It's not extremely up to date. It's not following APG4 or anything, but it's a good kind of moderate to let the botanists really figure out what the taxonomy is, and then they'll eventually update it and go to that. It's got a wetland tab. If you end up doing wetland delineation, you can look here, the Gulf Coastal Plain, cherry bark oak is facultative. So um, that can be a helpful source for you. Here's a bunch of links to different things about cherry bark oak, different resources. So if you're doing, you know, a, a book report, something like that, a technical report on cherry bark oak, there's some useful features. There's a bunch of characteristics if you're interesting that you can use. Um, so that's, that's one thing I like to look at on this site. Another really handy feature of this USDA plants website is going to be uh, the fact that you can look at things at a genus level or even a family level. So let's say someone sends me a photo of a maple from the West Coast somewhere, and I don't know what maples I have out there. In the scientific name box, I can type in just Acer because I know the maples are in the Acer genus. And it gave me Acer first. It gives me a really long list. You can see all sorts of stuff on here. Those are maples. It'll probably include some other plants that aren't maples but have those letters A-C-E-R somewhere in the name. But what I'm looking for is just Acer. So that's going to be the genus. And we'll see similar looking page to what we got. But you'll notice now up here, because we're at the genus level, not the species level, there's a subordinate taxa tag. So now it's telling me there's 27 species of maples in the continental U.S. Um, and territories. And it's showing me these range maps of all of them. You can see the blue colors on this hedge maple, for example, saying that's not native to North America, but it is found here planted. And so now I can start looking through this. And if I'm looking for a tree, maybe in Oregon or Washington state, I can see, oh, here's Acer circinatum vine maple. Maybe it's that one. Uh, what else is coming up? Acer glabrum, Rocky Mountain maple. Maybe I need to look into that. Big tooth maple, Acer grounded tatum. Maybe I need to look into that one. Acer nagundo, box elder, you can see is probably pretty much everywhere. So it's telling me what maples to direct my attention to. So it's just a real quick overview of all the different species in a genus real handy. Uh, for some of our bigger genera, th there are a lot of oaks in the US. So if I type in Quercus, you can see here's a lupine that had Quercus in there somewhere maybe. So you gotta look around here and find there's Quercus alba. So for some of these bigger ones, it may be harder to find just the genus. And so let's see here. You can just start guessing which page it might be on, or you can download an entire set. You can see we're looking at 244 different records here. So that tells you there's a lot of oaks in the U.S. And Mosa. it's going to depend on who the botanist was that attributed it as to where it ends up getting placed on this list. Um, often they're somewhere just like right in the middle. So we keep looking here. And you can see how the taxonomy on some of these people species has changed over time. Here it is, Quercus L period. 
So if I click that, now I can go subordinate taxa for oak, 207 species of oaks, and it's showing me range maps uh, for all. So that's going to be a really helpful feature on USDA plants. Our next link up is Silvix of North America. And uh, I have Silvix of North America right here on my desk. Uh, it's these two page or two books, basically. Uh, I guess it's zooming out the background because it's not close enough to my face, but there you go. Okay. Um, the conifer volume is 675 pages. The hardwood volume is 877 pages. But rather than carry around these big, heavy books, um, lose them, have to pay for them, all that. What this website is, it's those books just as, you know, a, a web interface. You can also download the PDFs for them. So let's say here I go to conifers. I'm clicking that one. Here's a bunch of different conifers. The only downside to this source is it hasn't been updated since about 1990, but there are current efforts in place to revise it. So hopefully that'll come out soon. But let's say I, that I'm putting together a report on longleaf pine. I found longleaf pine down here. And here's an enormous amount of information on longleaf pine. Good peer-reviewed information on longleaf pine. Really accurate range maps. They may be gray, a little harder to see, but very accurate. But it tells you everything about the habitat, the native range, soils topography, associated forest cover, reproduction and early growth, you know, all this stuff about seedling development, seed production, vegetative reproduction, growth and yield information, uh, how it reacts to competition, i.e. shade tolerance. That's going to be important. Damaging agents, special uses, genetics. Anytime someone asks me, you know, does this species hybridize with that? This is the first place I go because they have this hybrid section. Or occasionally a student will bring in a leaf and say, what is this? And we'll look at it and we'll say, well, it looks a little bit like an overcup oak, but it's doing this thing that live oak usually does. I'll go look at those species on this site and I'll see if they hybridize because we may have a hybrid of those two species. Um, so here it's describing the named hybrid Pinus ex sonderegeri um, of La Bali and Longleaf Pine there for you. And then look at this, they cited 31 things there. So lots of great information on Longleaf Pine here. So if you're doing a technical report, a presentation, this is going to be a great resource for you. Next up, we have the Fire Effect Information System. This is uh, a similar resource to what we just looked at, Silvix of North America, um, except it's a little more focused on fire. So let's see here. Let's look up our longleaf pine that we just looked at. And, you know, we all know there's a lot of information out there on longleaf pine on fire, so we're expecting to find a lot. So here it came up in that table. Some of this information is similar to what we just saw in Silvix of North America, but eventually you're gonna get into some very fire specific information, fire ecology or adaptations, fire regimes, fire effects. So if you're looking at prescribed burning, if you're a fire major interested in fire with one of our species, this is an excellent resource for you with lots of great information. You can see here they cited 59 sources. All right, next up is the Gymnast Firm database. Uh, this is a really impressive resource because this is not curated by a government agency or anything like that or university like everything we've looked at. Um, this is just uh, one person, Christopher Earle. Uh, it's got a PhD, I think, from UW uh, in forest ecology. Uh, but this is just someone that knows a lot about trees, loves trees, especially conifers, and has put together a fantastic resource that's out there for everyone to use. Um, so let's say, you know, you're doing a presentation on Ponderosa Pine. Let me just type in Ponderosa in the search box. Uh, he uses Google to run it, but it works very well. And so there I'm going to click Pinus Ponderosa. And it's giving me a lot of information on Pinus Ponderosa. But one thing this site has that's kind of better than anywhere else is they get really good information on the big trees, the old trees, the tall trees, some of that really cool, interesting stuff that we want to learn about. He also has some really cool range maps that are built through Google Maps, so you can really zoom in and see things um, that, you know, our old, you know, more traditional range maps don't have. And so here we're seeing a bunch of different subspecies. If I look at this subspecies, Benthamiana, um, it's got a page up for just this one. Uh, here's big trees information there about where they are when they've been found. Let me look up sugar pine real quick. <clears throat> Sugar pine's the tallest pine, the biggest pine. Uh, so there's a lot of cool stuff about it. Um, and here's, you know, heights, ages, whether they're dead or alive, date measured, details on measurements for some of these really big trees. So lots of cool stuff up here on conifers.org. Highly recommend that. 
Our next site up here is the Seek app through iNaturalist. This is just their website, but you can download this to your phone, tablet, whatever. Um, and this is a really good app where um, you just point it at the organism. It'll do insects, mammals, birds, everything. Uh, but it does trees, does a decent job with them. So just point it at the tree and it'll start telling you what family it's in, what genus it is in, and hopefully it'll get you down to what species it is. Uh, you can use it to post observations, do all sorts of other cool stuff. But um, one good study tool uh, in Dendro, you can download this Seek app and there's other similar apps. So um, I think iPhones now have what is it features you can use to do this. Uh, but basically you can download one of these, go out, walk around, see what you think something is, write it down like you would on a lab quiz, and then check yourself with this, see if this comes up with something similar. So this is going to be a useful study tool this semester. Um, our next few links uh, focus on invasive species. Um, three of the last four links here are just PDF books that are publicly available. Um, so this one right here is a non-native invasive plant guide. It'll slowly download the whole giant PDF here. But this has great descriptions of all your invasive plants that we find in the U.S. South. And what I really like about this resource is it includes recommendations on how to treat them and control them uh, with different herbicides. So it's a very good resource. So there you go. Next up, we have the Invasive Plants Atlas of the United States. Uh, it's through the Bugwood system and some other affiliations. Uh, but we could go to trees here. And looking at these trees here, we could find, say, the... Norway maple here, we can click on that one. We can find a description of it. We can find some pictures of it. And then because, you know, Norway maple is originally not native to North America, it can be hard to find a range map for it. But they'll show you a state level map where it's been, you know, regulated in different states. It's been added to invasive or noxious weed lists. You can see all that. And then there's a county by county level map of areas where it's been reported. So you can get a better sense for what its range might be as it's invaded uh, North America. And lots more great links. So. so that's the Invasive Plant Atlas, and it does more than trees. I was just focusing on the trees there for us. Okay, here's a PDF of the trees of Mississippi, free textbook, basically, looking at trees of Mississippi. And our flora has a ton of overlap with trees of Mississippi. So here's a page on chinkapin oak, Quercus muhlenbergii. We'll learn it in lab this semester. Tons of great info, info there few pictures, and then it goes on to the next one. So that's a helpful free textbook, basically. And then finally, we have Field Guide to Native Oak Species of Eastern North America. Again, it's a free PDF up through Google, but it's been put together by the Forest Service. Um, it basically covers everywhere east of the Hunnic Meridian there. So anytime someone from Texas Hill Country sends me a picture of an oak, I don't know. <laughs> this is usually the first thing I go to because I don't know those oaks very well. Because as we get into the middle of it here, you'll see um, it gives you description of the oak we're looking at. So here's swamp laurel oak, Quercus laurifolia. We'll learn this one in lab. But what it has is a really nice, really accurate county by county range back there for us. Um, in our native and negatives county, it looks like we're not quite in there, but pretty close. So, so there you go. Uh, so again, keep in mind the point of this. There's a lot of great online resources for Dendro. Um, they're out there for you this semester. They're going to be out there for you, you know, going on into the future. And so keep focusing on learning your trees, your field ID skills, use these resources, and uh, you'll eventually get really good at it. So hope you enjoyed.